Here is a recent computer that was given to me. I was tasked with the wonderful job of removing a virus-laden Windows 8 installation. This is the ASUS E222i all-in-one PC. And the first order of business will be cleaning up this filthy touchscreen. This is a touchscreen all-in-one PC. And just a brief feature overview, you have an, an infrared remote sensor here, plus and minus buttons, as well as a menu button for use with configuring the display settings. And I believe that's it. We have stereo speakers here, which don't sound all that bad. A hard drive indicator light, three USB connections, two of which are USB 3.0, a gigabit Ethernet card built in, two HDMI outputs, and the DC input, which is for use with this AC adapter, which is model number PA-1121-28. Still has the protective plastic coating on here. Doesn't feel all that cheap and uses just a barrel type connector like what you'd find on a laptop or netbook PC. Power button is over on the right side of the PC, as is the DVD multi recorder optical drive. It's interesting how this is set up. I'm really not sure what this indentation is for. And over on this side are two more USB 3.0 ports, a stereo headphone output, and a stereo microphone input, which doesn't look to be a line level input as well, microphone only, so you'd have to use an attenuator cable and an SD MMC card slot, as well as a mode and some sort of a menu button here whose functionality is still a mystery to me. I decided to take the liberty of firing up a ThinkPad here and reviewing the specifications of this particular computer which has a 21 and a half inch full 1080p LED backlit display, a third gen Intel core processor with Turbo Boost 2.0, Asus, Asus's Sonic Master technology for improved audio clarity, volume, and detailed audio. We'll have to see how well that actually performs. The mention of an HDMI input is curious as I believe if that's if I'm reading that correctly you can use this computer as a display for a gaming console, a Blu-ray player, or any other HDMI enabled device. So that will prove to be very interesting perhaps even useful to some people who have limited space for a separate monitor for gaming applications, Blu-ray players, you name it. Noticing a trend here, seems every time this ThinkPad makes an appearance, the battery is next to completely depleted. I just can't bring myself to remember to charge this thing when I probably should. It's shipped with an NVIDIA GeForce GT 610M with 1 gigabyte of onboard memory, 2 gigabytes all the way up to 8 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM, 500 up to 200 or rather 2 terabyte SATA hard drives, perhaps even a 64 gigabyte SSD if it's so equipped. So this will prove to be very interesting to see the actual specifications of this machine. What I'm going to do now is connect up that DC power plug to this computer, power it up for the first time, and see what I actually am dealing with. Power button's on this side, so we'll have to see now what happens when we power this on. Looks like we have an LED light over there. Okay. Something seems to be happening. We've got a backlit display. Okay, oh. Hmm. Okay, that's going to be interesting. Somebody's definitely been here, been in here prior to my uh, being tasked with this repair, so looks like I'll have to disassemble this computer once more. This is why I cannot stand computers that use this form factor because they're fantastic when you first get them and everything's working just fine but as time progresses and let's say a component fails or something needs to be replaced or upgraded well it is to say the least a cumbersome experience the hard drive is located beneath here the RAM is located beneath here there's no easy access to it I need to lift up this entire cover which is obscuring access to the RAM and the rest of the motherboard Somebody was most definitely in here poking around where they probably shouldn't have been. Got some loose screws there. These connections have been slightly mangled. Hopefully they work just fine. 
I haven't been able to test the USB 3.0 ports and the other various I.O. ports that are present on the side of this machine. That will prove to be interesting. But now what I need to do is remove what looks to be one, two, three, four. We've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, probably some more screws under here. And beneath that metal plate is the hard drive, a Western Digital Blue one terabyte model, 64 megabytes of cache. And that looks to be January 6th of 2013 was when this was manufactured, so not even two years old yet. But now I had to remove that cover just to gain access to the two, what I believe to be two screws. No, maybe only a single screw, which I need to be able to remove to get rid of this plate here, which will hopefully allow me to gain access to the RAM. A total of 12 screws have been removed from this guard. And if all goes well, we should be able to very gently pry this and coax it away from its resting position on top of these components. And I spy the RAM module. Oops, don't want to do that. I spy the RAM modules, and this doesn't look to have anything connected to it, so I can safely disregard it for now. Let's see the RAM here. Could just be a matter of needing to reseed it, who really knows. Uh, two gigabytes of... PC3, Samsung RAM made in Philippines. The owner thought that giving me the hard drive in advance would have fixed the problems, but uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say that those problems are not resident on the hard drive, but probably as a cause of some, uh, some ill-behaving component that must be present on this machine. Whatever it may be, hopefully I will be able to rectify it and resolve it in due time. I have to admit, this computer has me well and truly stumped. I've reseeded the RAM as well as tested different RAM modules, all with no success. The only other solution that I could think of, at least, is to remove the CMOS battery to reset the BIOS, but I can't seem to find it anywhere on this computer. Might not even have one, although I guarantee it's probably on the other side of this motherboard, which I really do not want to have to remove as it'll definitely be an involved process doing something like that. But uh, I've gone ahead and reattached this side panel here, complete with its input and output jacks. And I am getting power to the keyboard. I'm able to engage and disengage the caps lock functionality. So I really don't know what could be wrong. It could be this power supply that's failing. But I don't have another one on hand. This is one of the reasons why I really absolutely loathe these all-in-one PCs. Because when something fails on them like this, it just turns into a dreaded nightmare to attempt to fix, solve, and remedy whatever problems happen to be plaguing it. Hard drive sounds healthy. That seems to work just fine. RAM looks to be just fine. Everything seems to be working just fine, except for this computer in general. It just will not power up telling me a device, a USB device, is overcurrent. This is progress. Doing a little research online seems to reveal that this problem tends to rear its head when and if a USB port happens to be mangled, thus causing a short or other related problems. You can see that this person was receiving the exact same error message that I just did. I find it a bit funny too that I'm now at least able to get that BIOS screen that shows that warning message after engaging in otherwise unwise percussive maintenance on this PC. I gave it a few um, smacks here and there and that must have gone ahead and at least remedied somewhat the problem with the USB ports enough that it was able to fire up without promptly shutting down which would indicate a problem with, you guessed it, the power supply. But the PSU is not to blame. Some more investigative sleuthing by yours truly has revealed that the CMOS battery is inconspicuously located in a rather inaccessible portion of the motherboard, that is the underside of said motherboard. You can see it's right over there. Several screws need to be removed to gain access to it. I've reseated the CPU just in the case that that perhaps was cause for the trouble, which I highly doubt. Well, it's about another hour and a half later, and I have been busily attempting to repair this computer all to no avail. I think, unfortunately, I'm going to throw in the towel. 
because I have absolutely no clue whatsoever what could be possibly causing this. I have looked high and low for any signs, any obvious signs of perhaps a piece of metal that was causing a short somewhere on the motherboard, problems with the USB ports. I did however notice that this one right here is quite a bit wobbly in comparison to these. Even after resetting the CMOS battery, I'll let you take a look at what I'm seeing. I'll connect this up to power and I wouldn't really recommend running a computer without its heat sink and heat pipe assembly attached but this is just for a quick demonstration it shouldn't do any harm and if we power this on now you're gonna see what what I've been faced with for the past two or three hours everything looks to work just fine but it just keeps saying this USB device overcurrent now it says please enter setup to recover BIOS setting if this were a regular uh, just a traditional desktop PC with an actual CPU tower I would be able to merely disconnect the USB port in question so unfortunately I think I'm gonna have to be giving this back to the owner unrepaired which is rather unfortunate I was really under the impression this would be a simple virus fix and it's ended up taking up the better part of my Monday evening and I'm still unsuccessful in my repair attempts of this ASUS E, or rather not an EPC, an all-in-one PC. Even I surprise myself sometimes I was able to successfully reassemble this computer and this case here simply slides over here and if I could attempt to do this with one hand I could snap it on. It sounds like things are breaking but they're not. It's just the plastic tab snapping into place and then this button is going to prove to be a bit finicky it was before so just a moment ideally what you should do is remove this power button before removing this cover and then once you're whoops that's not something you want to do I'm gonna flip this on its side and then there we go last but not least is this stand which screws into the remaining four screws in this piece of aluminum there's this plastic trim piece which snaps out of way for easy removal of this stand. It just simply pops in place and snaps like that. Finally, we just need to insert all of the major screws back here. A total of five screws, I believe. And reinstall those rubber bumpers. No extra charge for the detritus that seem to have come out of this computer out of nowhere. I've inserted all and screwed in all the screws yet again and also reapplied these rubber covers here. There's only one missing which is up there. The rest of them thankfully were not missing and didn't seem to run off. I'm going to try to connect this up to power once more and do a final test. We should get the ASUS logo. Yes we do. I will now power this on. And I doubt anything is going to have changed. Let's see what we get. Feel the fan starting up. Color me surprised. This is one of those rare scenarios and situations where the computer problem just seems to fix itself on its own. I have no clue how this happened. Notice it's not telling us about USB devices being over voltage. I think I'm noticing, noticing is some weird flickering that's happening on this screen. I don't know if that's apparent on the camera, but it's flickering on and off. I hope that's not because the uh, USB device is deciding it wants to misbehave yet again. So while this is working, I'll go ahead and grab myself a keyboard and mouse and get it connected to here. Go into This is the first time I'm actually dealing with a computer that has a UEFI BIOS. So uh, this is most certainly a first for me. I really don't know what in particular seems to have fixed the problem, but I'm just glad that this computer seems to be working now. You can get a look at some of the specifications here. Intel Core i3 3220 running at 3.3 GHz. I'd really like to know what's causing this flickering. I suspect it's either this power supply, which may be misbehaving after extended runtime with a malfunctioning and or shorting USB port. That could have done some damage to it, who really knows. Or the display inverter board could be possibly on its way out as well, I really don't know. And I'll load optimized defaults. 
There's certainly some issues going on with this computer behind the scenes, but as long as it's able to boot up into Windows, that's all that really matters. I've never, like I've said, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but something... Okay. Yeah, that's a first for me. Might be problems with the graphics card in this computer, I really don't know. Detected 753 threats, Windows Defender. It's having a field day. Oh, we've got warnings here. Malware detected. Oh, Windows Defense. <laughs> I find it interesting how Asus reserved 149 gigabytes to the Windows C drive. And then there's the data drive, which has 764 gigabytes of space at its disposal. And the owner's only been using the Windows C drive, which they're not supposed to, to store all their documents, which it's almost filled up. It only has 553 megabytes free of 150 gigabytes. Well, we've got some random widgets, desktop widget, telling us the power consumption of this computer. Still a large amount of unexplainable odd behavior. Oh, no, Windows Update hasn't been checked for up. Oh, well, that might be part of the problem. And I just noticed something. This is a touch screen. <laughs> Took me this long to notice that it actually is. I, I didn't even know that this was a touch screen. Four gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit operating system, activated and licensed. There was a message down here that was warning of files that were waiting to be burned to disk and I have no clue where it went. It just disappeared into thin air. So there were a few files that were waiting to be burned to a disk. They've actually been sitting in the ready to be written to disk queue since June 26th of 2014. Quite a while and just so happened to have an mp3 file that I can demonstrate the premium sound speakers that are present on here really not that bad of, a, of an internal speaker setup certainly could be better but it sounds more than acceptable and it turns out that the majority of the problems were caused by that loose USB port over here. Let's see if I get this right. I want the charms bar, settings, power, shutdown. And that will conclude this video on this mischievous Asus all-in-one PC.